Woman finds massive tree washed ashore, then she sees a carved warning message on the trunk. The ocean is full of mystery, and sometimes it leaves bizarre surprises along the shore for people to find. From an ancient walrus skull to a mysterious blob, here are the 20 strangest things washed up on beaches. Number 20. Ancient Walrus Skull Some people get lucky, and Forrest Shepard is one of them. In 2011, then 13-year-old Forrest was on a casual stroll along the beach near Santa Cruz, California, when he stumbled upon a historical discovery, a complete skull of a then-unknown 5-million-year-old walrus species encased in a giant boulder. At a young age, Forrest was already fascinated by fossils and archaeology and so he quickly realized how significant the skull was. The fossilized skull was about 70 pounds, including the rock it was encased in, and remarkably well-preserved. He knew right away that it was an extraordinary discovery. With the help of a friend, Forrest managed to transport the heavy specimen back to his family's car. Many years later, analysis revealed just how extraordinary his discovery was. The fossil that Forrest found was identified as a new species of walrus, and in recognition of Forrest's contribution to paleontology, the scientist named this ancient walrus species after him, Valenictus shepardi. This naming was a tribute to the young man who, by chance, found a significant piece of prehistoric life. Valenictus shepardi, as it turns out, is a unique species. It features a skull lacking teeth, except for the tusks, suggesting an adaptation for highly specialized suction feeding, even more so than in present-day walruses. Imagine your name being immortalized after a serendipitous find. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now. I ain't gonna lie, I would've wanted that discovery to come with a little money as well. You know what I mean? I just discovered a new species. Yeah, my name being used is one thing. Can it come with a little cash, or is that shallow? Is that me being a little bitch? I don't know. I don't know. Now, number 19, the sea dragon. Whoa. In 2021, during routine draining and maintenance of a lagoon at the Rutland Water Nature Reserve, Joe Davis, a conservation team leader, made a groundbreaking discovery. He found the fossilized remains of an ichthyosaur, colloquially known as a sea dragon. Not only is this fossil rare, but it also turned out to be the largest and most complete ichthyosaur skeleton ever found in Britain. The fossil was estimated to be over 180 million years old and over 32 feet in length, making it among the oldest and largest fossils of its kind ever found. It's also the most complete, as the find included a nearby complete skeleton, a rarity for such large prehistoric creatures. Ichthyosaurs, for those who might not know, were marine reptiles that lived alongside the dinosaurs, emerging around 250 million years ago. They were the apex predators of the Jurassic Oceans, reaching up to 25 meters in length and equipped with numerous sharp teeth. The Rutland ichthyosaur, thought to be a Temnodontosaurus trigonodon, was carefully excavated by a team of expert and amateur paleontologists. This process involved a complex operation of uncovering, recording, and safely collecting the specimen. Today, researchers are trying to learn more about these sea monsters that once ruled our oceans. Number eight. Why is it when I hear they're trying to learn more about sea monsters and dinosaurs that once roamed and walked this earth. Why do I continuously feel when they say that? To me, it sounds like they're trying to bring them back. Anybody else? I just feel like that's what they're trying to do. They're, they're not trying to just learn about them. No, they're trying to bring them back. Teen, a mysterious Lego man. Ah, are there any this. Lego fans out there? If you are, then perhaps you would have been delighted if you were the one who stumbled upon this incredible find. In 2011, beachgoers on Siesta Key Beach in Florida were surprised when they encountered an 8-foot-tall, 100-pound fiberglass Lego man on the shore. There was no way to find the origin of the Lego man. The only thing found on the Lego man that could help trace its origin is a t-shirt with the cryptic phrase, No Real Than You Are, and the name Ego Leonard on its back. Naturally, some believe that the Lego man was a publicity stunt by Legoland. But, as it turned out, it was actually an art installation. A bizarre one. The name on the Lego, Ego Leonard, turned out to be the artist behind this bizarre figure. However, 
this is just an alias, and the artist's real identity remains unknown. Now, in case you're curious to learn more about Ego Leonard, he has a website describing his creations. Number 17. Cursed Melon Finding food along the shore is something quite normal. However, this melon captured the attention of beachgoers in UAE because it was allegedly cursed. This discovery was made in 2016. A melon, yes, a melon was discovered along the shores of UAE. As harmless as a melon sounds, many were quite alarmed by this particular fruit, mainly because of its alleged magical markings. It was so bad that the locals had to call police officers. The melon was allegedly impaled with pins and nails. And yeah, it don't look enticing to eat anyway. I'm trying to get a officers. good picture. The melon was allegedly impaled with... Yeah, yeah, look at that. That don't look inviting. That don't look tasty. It don't look like it's juicy. It don't look none of that type of stuff. It looks like if you eat it, you may pass out. You may start to become kind of loopy. May feel like you're on some type of or having some type of LSD trip or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, that don't look good. With pins and nails, and had inscriptions carved all over it, which many believed was a curse. And so clerics were called to cleanse the supposedly voodooed melon. The melon was chopped, the nails were removed, and the symbols were carefully cut up with a knife to ensure that even if it were cursed, it wouldn't hmm. affect the locals who unfortunately encountered it. A melon doesn't really sound that spooky, but if I encountered the same thing, I'd also probably be terrified, just like the locals who stumbled upon this cursed fruit. Number 16. Mysterious Rubber Blocks Now here's a mystery that has plagued those living near Northern Europe. Perhaps some of you guys might have heard about it before. The Chippedare Mystery. This wasn't a single incident, but a curious phenomenon happening over the years perplexing beachcombers and baffling scientists. From the United Kingdom to France and beyond, these slabs were found, each time stirring curiosity and wonder among those who found them. But where did they come from? And what on earth was Chippadier? Well, initially, people thought it was yet another curse, or perhaps a hidden message sent by spies or aliens. But as it turned out, it was none of those. It wasn't an ancient artifact or a cryptic message but rather something relatively mundane. The name Chippadir originates from a rubber plantation in West Java, Indonesia, operating in the late 19th and early 20th centuries. These blocks were made of gutta percha, a rubber-like material used historically for various purposes, from golf balls to telegraph cables. And so, these blocks wouldn't have confused locals living in Indonesia, but for some weird reason, these rubber blocks ended up in Europe, there are several theories trying to explain how these blocks ended up there. One theory suggests that these blocks were cargo on a ship that met an unfortunate fate, sinking to the ocean's depths. Over time, as the sea reclaimed the ship, these gutta percha blocks started their journey across the waters, eventually washing up on distant shores. However, this is just a theory to this day. Number 15. Garfield Phones Are there any Garfield lovers out there? This lasagna-loving cat is definitely among the most popular characters. Garfield is timeless. And so, when locals discovered Garfield novelty phones along the beaches of Brittany, France, they were quite delighted. Garfield phones was a thing? When was Garfield phones a thing? And I grew up watching Garfield. That was one of my favorites. When was that a thing? I, I missed that completely. <laughs> that whole wave I missed. For over 30 years, pieces of these phones have been found along the local beaches. These phone parts, including coiled cords, receivers, and feline heads with Garfield's characteristic smirk, have been confounding beach cleaners and environmental activists. Just where are these things coming from? Well, the source of these Garfield phones was a mystery for decades. Environmentalists were concerned that they might be coming from a lost shipping container at the bottom of the ocean, potentially contaminating the marine ecosystem with plastic. Luckily, the mystery was solved through a local farmer named René Morvan. He recalled discovering a metal shipping container filled with these Garfield phones in a sea cave following a storm in the mid-1980s. This container, revealed only when the tide was low, had slowly released its content over the years. Unfortunately, the discovery of the source of the Garfield phones didn't change the fact that it had already released several plastic products out there in the ocean. 
Number 14. Neanderthal Footprints About 100,000 years ago, a group of Neanderthals, including lively children, were meandering along what is now the southern coast of Spain. Just like how children nowadays play in the sand, the young ones were meandering and jumping in the sand, leaving behind a set of footprints which, without their knowledge, mm. would one day tell us about their story. Over 100,000 years later, in 2021, we've discovered the footprints this family has left behind. Discovered at Mata Las Cañas in Dañana National Park, the footprints were studied by researchers from the University of Huelva. Their findings were quite revealing, indicating that the prints belonged to a mix of children, adolescents, and adults, with the majority being young Neanderthals. The researchers deduced this based on the size and depth of the footprints. One aspect that stands out is the playful nature of these ancient children. Among the 87 Neanderthal footprints found, several smaller prints appeared grouped in a chaotic arrangement suggesting that these were areas where very young individuals were playing or loitering on the shore. The smallest footprints, measuring just about 5.5 inches long, were likely made by a six-year-old Neanderthal child. These footprints tell us plenty about the lives of Neanderthals, but that's not the only- I would have known you could use footprints. You know, the things that you, you, your parents make you take, stand on this paper when you're a little baby, then they hang it on the refrigerator and walk past it in all of your footprints. As you get older, it stays there and you look at it like it's weird. Who would have thought footprints could tell you so much about history and the time once was and what they could have possibly been doing? Just sporadic footprints. Like, wow. I, I never would have thought about using someone's footprints. The significance they have as they're also believed to be the oldest Neanderthal hominid tracks found in Europe. Number 13. Giant Plastic Pipes In a rather unexpected maritime mishap, the English coastline became the temporary resting place for some gigantic plastic pipes in 2017. These pipes were discovered along the beach in Norfolk, and they were no ordinary pipes. They were massive, with some measuring a whopping 8 feet to a staggering 1,500 feet in length. Luckily, there weren't a lot of questions surrounding their origins. Initially, these enormous pipes were towed from Norway to Algeria for a construction project. However, in a twist that sounds like something out of a seafaring tale, a container ship collided with the tow, setting these gigantic pipes free to embark on an unplanned journey to the English coast. The pipes washed up at various locations, including Eccles on Sea, Sea Pauling, and Winterton. Despite their intimidating size, the authorities assured that the pipes posed no danger or potential for pollution. However, the sight of these pipes attracted a fair bit of attention, including from children who found them an irresistible playground. The recovery operation for these pipes involved securing them at a single offshore location before towing them back to Norway. Fortunately, the entire ordeal ended without a hitch. Number 12. Hmm. Lady Liz Built in Sunderland, England in 1879 by the renowned shipbuilder Robert Thompson Jr., the Lady Elizabeth was a three-masted iron-hulled bark weighing 1,155 tons. The ship Ooh. began its life as a hard-working cargo vessel, traveling the world and braving the high seas. However, the Lady Elizabeth's fortunes took a dramatic turn. In 1912, while on a voyage from Vancouver to Mozambique with a lumber shipment, she encountered severe weather near Cape Horn. This storm proved disastrous, as it not only claimed the lives of four crew members, but also resulted in the loss of the ship's boats and part of her deck cargo. The vessel sustained significant damage, including a six-foot break in the hull and keel, along with a one-foot hole. Despite these setbacks, she reached the Stanley Falkland Islands for repairs. Upon inspection in Stanley, the Lady Elizabeth was condemned as unseaworthy, and was eventually converted into a coal hulk. She remained stationed there until 1936, when a storm caused her mooring lines to break. Drifting helplessly, she found her final resting place in Whalebone Cave in Stanley Harbor. Today, the remains of the Lady Elizabeth are still partially beached and continue to endure the pounding waves and high tides. Despite the years it endured, many of the ship's accessories including the main crank for the anchor, parts of the crow's nest, and most of the wooden decking, surprisingly remain attached. However, time and the elements have not been kind to the Lady Liz. Don't worry about it. 
some billionaire come along and restore it or buy it, then restore it or turn it into a museum or something like that. Have y'all heard the latest? Like I would think I was scrolling social media and it said some billionaire is wanting to recreate a replica of the Titanic and set it sail. You want to set sail on a replica on a replica of the Titanic? No, thank you, bro. <laughs> no, thank you. I don't care if it's the best design ever, ever. You hear me? Ever. Just the mere thought of it being a replica or having something to do with the Titanic or just being associated with that name. Nah, no, thank you. Today, the ship suffers from severe rust and the keel has begun to rust away, leaving large holes, and the interior is often flooded during high tide. While efforts were made to salvage the Lady Elizabeth and convert her into a floating museum, it never materialized See? and was never accomplished due to a lack of funding, and so she remains a ghostly landmark. Number 11. 200 foot long tanker. In May 2016, Locals walking along the coast of West Africa encountered a mysterious and bizarre find. A massive oil tanker was washed ashore, later identified as the Tamaya One. Ships and tankers can easily get beached and stranded sometimes, mm. but the case of this 206-foot-long oil tanker is quite different. You see, it was found abandoned on a beach in Robertsport, Liberia. No crew members were in sight. The ship had left Panama and was last seen well outside pirate-infested waters. Logically, there are several possible reasons for its abandonment, including the financial troubles of the vessel's owner, leading to an unpaid crew. However, the Liberian Maritime Authority could only speculate as the true reasons remain mysterious. What's more bizarre is that evidence of a fire in the captain's quarters was also found, which might also mean that foul play was involved. Unfortunately, before authorities could fully secure the area, locals had already looted and vandalized the vessel. Number 10. Gone Bananas In 2007, residents of two Dutch North Sea islands experienced a rather unusual sight on their local shore. They discovered thousands of unripe bananas. Yep, it's not really something you'd expect to see in the ocean. The no. culprit behind this massive banana bonanza along the beach was a cargo ship that fell during a storm. The beach was strewn with bananas leading to quite a spectacle as locals immediately went to the shore to collect the precious bananas. I'm not fond of the fruit, but I definitely join in the fun. Number 9. Sure. A Massive Dragon Just imagine you're strolling along the beach, just enjoying the sea breeze, when you suddenly stumble upon a massive dragon skeleton. I can imagine how surprising this experience would be. This makes me wonder just how many people have been spooked or surprised by this enormous skeleton. But is this actually the remains of a dragon? Well, not really. This isn't a real fossil either. It's something else. This massive dragon is about 40 feet long and 9 feet tall. It's huge, and it took about two months to make. Yes, you heard that right. This skull took two months to make because it's supposedly an advertisement for the next installment of a show. Now, it might be mm. fake, but even so, it's quite astounding to witness this in person. Number 8. Football Fish What would you think if you stumbled upon this creature? Quite the monstrous fella, isn't it? This isn't an extraterrestrial monster, but rather a creature known as a football fish. I think if I stumbled upon that, I think, why am I in this ocean? Why, why did I get in this ocean? I'll never get back in this ocean ever again. Because you know it's probably... If we know about this species, imagine how many species that are worse than this that we haven't discovered yet that are out there. No, I don't need to be in the ocean. To see. This is crazy, bro. But this also makes me think it's down at those depths, like those really, really high pressure depths of the ocean where it's super, super dark. Like that's it makes me think that's where that came from. Look at even how thin it is. That pressure, I think, it, it adapted that pressure, though. It isn't an extraterrestrial monster, but rather a creature known as a football fish, or more popularly, an angler fish. Angler. These particular remains were discovered by beachgoers in California, and needless to say, many of them were quite surprised. You see, aside from its monstrous appearance, this creature is straight from the depths of the ocean, 
typically dwelling in the mysterious lightless zone at about 3,000 feet deep. See? It's unusual to see these guys in shallow water, let alone washed ashore. But what really is this bizarre looking creature? The Pacific football fish is a type of angler fish. It's jet black with a gelatinous body, rough spikes, tiny eyes, and a massive mouth lined with needle-like teeth. One of its most bizarre features is a bioluminescent stalk protruding from its head, acting like a fishing rod with a glowing bulb at the end, hence its name, anglerfish. These guys aren't only alien in appearance, but also in behavior. Only the female Pacific football fish possess this bioluminescent appendage and can- And that fish makes me think it came from another planet grow up to 24 inches, while the males are much smaller, reaching only about one inch. There's a reason for this stark difference. You see, the males are considered parasites. They latch onto the females and eventually fuse to them, leaving only their reproductive organs behind to mate. The single female can carry several male anglerfish on her body. Now, the reason behind this is quite simple. It's impossible to find a mate down there so it's more convenient to fuse to a female fish. For the scientists, each football fish provided a valuable opportunity for study. After all, observing them in their natural deep sea habitat is exceedingly tricky. However, it's still quite a mystery why several of these specimens ended up ashore. Number seven, Mariwai Monster. Now just take a look at this one. How would you have reacted if you stumbled upon something like this while walking along the shore? Most people would be incredibly startled. But what exactly is this creepy looking object? This thing, several feet long and covered in long dark tentacles and shells, isn't a monster, although it certainly looks like one. This was discovered in 2016 along the shore of Auckland, New Zealand. And needless to say, it easily captured the attention of the internet. Because of its rather monstrous appearance, it was dubbed the Mariwai Monster. When this strange dreadlocked entity washed up on Mariwai Beach, it sparked a wave of creative and outlandish theories about its origins. Some people humorously speculated it could be anything from a Rastafarian whale to an alien time pod. However, it turned out that this bizarre thing was actually an ordinary piece of driftwood that got covered in gooseneck barnacles. Barnacle. These marine crustaceans are known to- I'm sitting here wrapping my brain because I've seen them before and I couldn't remember what that they- what was the name of them? Bro, that was, that was making my brain hurt at that point. We're trying to figure that out. But barnacles, yes, I've seen that before. Attach themselves to surfaces ah. like driftwood or rocks in temperate waters globally. Interestingly, in some parts of the world, like barnacles. Spain and Portugal, gooseneck barnacles are considered a delicacy for their sweet flesh. Would you be interested in trying out one of these? Let so I didn't know people eat that, though. I should, though, because it reminds you of, like, clams or oysters or something like that maybe snails so yeah and i eat oysters i've eaten snail and i've eaten clams so i guess i shouldn't frown my face up at this right <laughs> anybody ever had barnacles before let me know in the comments down below number six megalodon tooth the megalodon a giant shark that once ruled the oceans continues to captivate the imagination despite being extinct for over three million years. This prehistoric predator, often depicted as an oversized great white shark, is known mainly for fossilized teeth. Some people speculate that it could still exist in the ocean's unexplored depths, Me. but this theory conflicts Me. with what we understand about biological adaptations necessary for deep sea life. The megalodon's existence in shallow coastal waters is evidenced by its fossil record, showing a preference for marine mammals similar to great whites. The exact reasons for its extinction remain unclear, but changes in ocean temperatures, food availability, and competition from emerging species like the great white shark are likely contributors. However, many continue to believe that this creature somehow still exists at the bottom of the ocean. Perhaps this intrigue surrounding its existence makes each discovery connected to the Megalodon so intriguing. In 2022, the local community of Maryland was delighted when a nine-year-old girl discovered a five-inch wow. Megalodon Nasher. What's more astounding was the fact that she found it on Christmas Day. A young girl named Molly Sampson discovered the five-inch long tooth wow. on a beach at the Calvert Cliff State Park in the Maryland region of Chesapeake Bay. It turned out that the young girl was an avid fossil hunter and this was among the hundreds of shark teeth that she found. 
The tooth was then taken to Spihan Godfrey, a curator of paleontology at Calvert Marine Museum in Solomons. It was confirmed that the tooth belonged to a megalodon, making this discovery incredibly significant. Number 5. Mysterious Metal Seats In 2023, beachgoers were surprised when they discovered seats. That's right, metal seats along the shores of New Jersey Beach, specifically in Margate. Initially, this peculiar discovery sparked a flurry of speculation and theories, especially online. The sight of these rusted out seats without any cushions, seat belts, or buckles naturally- Don't that look like it could have came from like a plane? Inside of a plane, maybe a plane crash? The seats? Led to some wild guesses. The most dramatic of these was the notion that they might be remnants of a tragic airplane crash. However, the truth turned out to be a little less interesting. The Margate Police Department, conducting its own investigation, dispelled the airplane crash theory. As it turns out, these seats are believed to be from a retired subway or train car. Their presence oh. on the beach is attributed to strong storms that likely dislodged them from their original resting place. The seats then became an artificial reef, an underwater structure often used to promote marine life. It seems that decommissioned railcar seats are typically stripped down to their metal components and then used in the creation of these artificial reefs. In this case, the seats were believed to be part of the Point Lookout artificial reef along the southern shore of Long Island. Gotcha. Number 4. Gotcha. Elusive Cannibal Fish Imagine strolling along the beach when you suddenly stumble upon a scaleless fish with fanged jaws and enormous eyes. Now that's what quite an unexpected discovery that will surely unsettle most people. This creature was discovered in 2023, lying lifelessly along the Oregon beaches, and no one really knew the reason why these deep sea dwellers suddenly began getting washed ashore. This alien looking creature is known as a lancet fish. See the teeth on I was trying to catch it at the right spot where you could see the teeth on that. But walking on the beach, imagine you swimming in the ocean. And something like that, try to bite on your ankle, your leg, or your thigh, or something like that. That's in No, no thank you, bro. I'm giving you reasons why we might need to stay out of this water. Stay out of the water. With their slinky bodies and sail-like fins, are usually found in the ocean's depths, more than a mile beneath the surface. They inhabit tropical and subtropical waters, but have been known to travel as far north as Alaska's Bering Sea for feeding. What makes their appearance on Oregon beaches particularly intriguing is the mystery surrounding it. Scientists Gosh. aren't entirely sure why these deep sea creatures are washing ashore. Some believe it might be due to them chasing prey too close to the shore, or being pursued by predators. Others speculate that it could be related to weather or climate patterns in the Pacific Ocean. In Asia and other parts of the world, seeing deep sea creatures in shallow water usually meant that something was amiss, and it was a bad omen. Number 3. Mysterious Witch Bottles In 2023, locals were surprised to see witch bottles being washed ashore along the Gulf of Mexico. For some of you, witch bottles might be something new, so let me tell you more about them. The concept of witch bottles dates back to the 16th and 17th century England. These were tumultuous times, steeped in superstition, fear of witchcraft, and the occult. People were genuinely frightened of curses and evil spirits and they sought various means to protect themselves. This is where witch bottles come into the story, playing a significant role as a popular counter-magical device. Imagine a small stoneware bottle, often filled with an assortment of items like nails, pins, urine, hair, hair. and sometimes I'm, even a strap. I knew he was going to say hair. Somebody's hair is always involved in some type of witchcraft or something. A parchment. Some say the urine was crucial, believed to lure in the evil witch's magic. Others argue that the sharp objects serve to impale or harm malevolent spirits. The contents might sound bizarre to us now, but back then, each had a symbolic significance in the battle against dark forces. These witch bottles were often hidden in homes, buried underneath the hearth, placed within walls, or concealed in other secretive spots. The idea was to keep them hidden, continuously working to ward off evil influences. Finding a witch bottle uh -huh. these days is quite rare. And when one is discovered, it's often during renovations of old buildings. The practice wasn't just confined to England. It crossed the ocean with the early settlers to America, where it morphed slightly in form and function. American witch bottles, while similar in purpose, 
sometimes contained different items, reflecting the local beliefs and available materials. But why were they called witch bottles? It's a bit of a misnomer, really. The term witch in this context didn't necessarily refer to a practitioner of witchcraft. Instead, it was more about the idea of negating witchcraft or evil spells. The bottles were a form of sympathetic magic, the belief that like affects like. By creating a trap or a decoy for the curse, people believed they could neutralize the threat. Over time, the fear of witches and evil spells diminished, and so did the use of witch bottles. However, they've not been entirely forgotten. Uh -uh. In modern times, there's been a resurgence of interest in witch bottles, especially among those who practice neo-pagan or Wiccan traditions. Today, they're often used for protection, but in a more symbolic and personal way, tailored to the individual's beliefs and needs. Today, the discovery of old witch bottles has provided historians and archaeologists valuable insights into the beliefs and practices of the past. Each bottle is like a time capsule, offering a glimpse into the fears and hopes of its creator. From their origins in the fear-ridden times of early modern England to their modern reinterpretation, witch bottles have been a constant symbol of the human desire for protection and control over the unknown forces of the world. So if you see something like this along the beach, it's in your best interest not to approach it. You never know just what curse it might unleash. Number 2. Giant Driftwood Whenever people mention seeing driftwood by the beach, this isn't what I imagine. I mean, just Yo. take a look at this. This massive tree was washed away at LaPush, Washington. Now, the man standing here might look incredibly small compared to the enormous tree behind him, yes. but it's also mostly a forced perspective. Don't get me wrong, though. This tree is still massive, between 5 and 10 feet in diameter. I'd definitely be interested in taking photos of a massive tree like this. The problem, however, is that these large obstructions typically take a long time before they naturally decay, so the local authorities are left to clean them up. And now it's time for today's topic. Woman finds massive tree washed ashore. Then she sees a carved warning message on the trunk. Now this is yet another piece of driftwood discovered along the shore. The woman who saw the giant tree claimed that she saw an inscription on the tree. It looked like runes and symbols. She claimed that it didn't resemble any known language. Unfortunately, when she returned to the tree to take a closer photo, it was already gone. Did the tree contain a rune or an ancient carving left behind by our ancestors who lived thousands of years ago? Perhaps it's like the hunger stones that reveal messages of famine or bad omens as the water levels recede. If so, what message did the tree contain? Unfortunately, we can only speculate. Number 1. The Blob On the sandy shores of Western Australia, Beachgoers were recently left scratching their heads over a peculiar discovery back in 2023. Dubbed the Blob, this mysterious creature turned out to be a coffin ray, also known as a numbfish. This intriguing sea dweller is unique for its pear-like shape, largely due to its greatly enlarged pectoral fin disc and extremely short tail. But it's not just their appearance that's shocking, literally. These rays are equipped with electric organs capable of generating up to 200 volts of electricity, used both for hunting and self-defense, found primarily in Australian waters. These creatures prefer sandy or muddy bottoms near shores and estuaries. These creatures can be quite easy to identify. They can be distinguished by their peculiar, almost comical appearance, a flat, blob-like body with a tiny tail, giving them a look that's more pancake than predator. But again, don't let their odd shape fool you. These creatures pack a punch. The numbfish has Believe electric it. organs that can deliver shocks up to 200 volts, Jeez. making them the ocean's equivalent of a live wire. These shocks, while not typically dangerous to humans, can be quite a surprise, earning them their nickname. Despite their shocking abilities, numbfish lead a rather laid-back lifestyle, spending much of their time buried in the sand, waiting to ambush prey. Their diet varies, ranging from small fish to the occasional unlucky penguin. These electric pancakes of the sea remind us that the ocean's biodiversity is as surprising as it is fascinating. I'm sure that you guys also have a bizarre experience to share.